Hello, everyone. Um, I'm, I want to start as one of my icons for my life started. I'm here over to recruit you. I'm here to recruit you for a change. Uh, what I do on a daily basis, I talk to a lot of people about strategic communication, um, intercultural communication. And I do have some questions for you because I hear many crazy stories about different groups. Uh, my favorite ones are people of color, Jews, Roma people, and because I'm one of them, so-called, as well about LGBT people. So how many people of you have never met a gay person in their life? Could you raise a hand? How many of you have never talked to the gay person in their life? Can you raise a hand? Oh, this is a great audience because usually I do have some, some hands up and saying like, oh my God, who they are. Uh, yes, and I hear quite a lot of these stories on like, you know, these people, gay men, usually are showering in the glitter showers every morning. As you see, I didn't do this this morning. Uh, or lesbian women live on their bicycles or drive their trucks to work. Uh, when we hear prides, I'm one of those actually who is organizing the Euro Pride this year and I hear many stories what have happened in Riga and I'm oh, sometimes wondering are these people traveling and stalking other prides around the world because such things has never happened in Riga. Yes, and where do they get from it? They are traveling. They are traveling in our mother Google, in our mother media. But this is actually how we look on a daily basis. You can't actually see anyone. We are as simple as anyone else. We are not the biggest threat to the nation. This is the pride, how the pride looks in Riga. So boring. Unfortunately, our biggest muse wasn't there in 2012, so it was raining and hail. But hopefully it's going to be much better weather this year. A lot of media, a lot of opinion uh, leaders are saying we are kind of the wicked witches of the Oz, or we are the wizards of the Oz that we can change the world, we are ruling the world. But actually, we are those tiny little people walking down the yellow bricks of Oz. We are reaching for the stars, we are trying to reach for the equality and human rights. But the reality is a little different. What we see in our daily basis is the clash. A lot of media, a lot of people want to say it's a clash between the belief, uh, it's a clash between the values, it's a clash between the civilizations. No, it's not. I believe it's a clash between the beliefs. The LGBT issues are now the top issues around the world. It's been in 50s in America, there's been an Afro-American movement, Throughout the 20th century, there's been a women's rights movement. Now is the time for the LGBT people to come out and show that we are there. We're the same. We sit next to you in the, ta uh, in the work offices. We drink the tea. And it doesn't make you somehow gay. Unless you're not. Hillary Clinton in 2011 made a groundbreaking speech in United Nations. She said, gay rights are human rights. That she was the first leader in the world that said that gay people are not demanding some extra rights. We are demanding the same rights, the same equal rights as everybody else. Meanwhile, our two dear friends in Russia from 2006 to 2013 have initiated the other type of legislation that would ban so-called homosexual propaganda. That would say no positive information about the homosexuality towards children, towards the society whatsoever. That means the people and the young people per se would not would, or would be banned to listen to Tchaikovsky would be banned to read Oscar Wilde, or in the same time, would be banned to look at the Pedro Almodovar movies. Are these things actually make you gay? Yes, only if you are one. I'm, I'm talking about two superpowers. 
But what is happening, I do not believe myself to the conspirational theories. But here in Latvia as well, as in the rest of the Europe, there has been too many pieces of puzzle that kind of stick together. In Latvia in 2013, two right-wing extremists tried to introduce the same type of legislation as it is in Russia, the ban of homosexual propaganda. Just recently, some politicians initiated so-called morality lessons for children. Somehow, the Russian Orthodox Church was silent for a long time, but now they're out and loud. Somehow these puzzles stick together. But why history? Why do I talk that why changing history is hot and why am I standing here? Because this is a magic moment. This is a magic year of 2015 because we, this is the year when we celebrate this nation 25 years of regaining independence. We can celebrate the achievements that we got. I'm celebrating myself because Latvia has never been independent for so long. Latvia is also leading the European Union at the moment. Such a small, tiny nation has been in the front of such a giant organization, one of the world's biggest economics and one of the world's superpowers. This is, these are the things that we should be proud of. And these are the things what Latvians should be proud of, because one thing Latvians unfortunately do best, we love to suffer. This is thing what I've been seeing ages and ages. We love suffering and nothing else makes us much more happy than suffering. We have to change this. We have to show that we are proud. And these are the few things that we are proud and we should be proud of. There is one more thing happening this year. It, from the June 15th to the June uh, 21st, Riga will host the first Europride, which is the largest with the most important LGBT event in Europe in 2015. Some people have already mentioned it as the, probably the most important pride in Europe in 2015. And this, it happens over here just for the exact reasons. Because we're proud to be Latvians, we have so much to show, and this is gonna be an excellent event. And it proves just one thing, why it happens in here. We beat at such metropolises as Milan, as Manchester, as Barcelona. These are all gay capitals around the world. Why does it happen in Riga? Exactly, that's why. Because it's a time for change and we are ready for change. Maybe not all of us, but I think the Latvian society is ready to change. Now, maybe in some of you, in your minds, there are questions, so what has this to do with me, maybe I'm not gay, and maybe I'm not supporting. But you're all business leaders, business influencers. And you know what? This tiny little group that is still not demanding any extra rights is around 8 to 12 percent in every single society. And this is the quite a market that can be influenced by communication strategy, by the marketing, and across the globe, it happens. In Latvia, not that much, not just yet. But this is the, the pace where we could go and where we could walk. Community Initiative Inc. in the United States made a research that 55% of LGBT and their friends would prefer the brand that supports diversity and would support LGBT people. I do it myself, and I do it quite intentionally to choose the brands that love me instead of choosing the brands that hate me. 77% out of these respondents would pay more to get uh, the services or the goods that support them. And 78% would switch brands. Easily. This is what we do, and this is what I do as well, intentionally. Your question, that's America, that's not Latvia, it's other market, we can't influence this, to little people. Well, I'll give you an, quite another example, how does this small Latvian 
organization, nation can influence actually a global business. Once upon a time, I think a couple years ago, one guy, I, I told you the story about Russia. One guy in Seattle, if I'm not mistaken, woke up in the morning, wanted to do something good for the LGBT community in Russia. So, probably opened the bar, went to a shop, whatever, and said, oh, that's Russian, that's Russia in there. Oh, it sounds like Russia. Oh, let's boycott. Let's raise some awareness to our American people that probably don't know where the Russia is, but still feeling that as a fear, let's do boycott and let's tell the people how bad are the Russian politics. There was a one big mistake. Do you recognize that brand? That brand is Latvian. Wrong country. We came out with a statement towards one of the America's leading LGBT activists. We said, please stop, because you are trying to influence Russia, but what you're actually doing, you're harming our nation. We worked quite, uh, it was a quite a long walk with us. We answered the stupid questions like, since when Latvia is not part of the Russia anymore? I, an I asked, since when America is not part of the British colony? So, all of these different things, which at the end of the day led Stoli to be on a cover page of the New York Times, stating, wrong country targeted, Chicago Tribune, Washington Post. We probably don't feel so much, but I believe Stoli really felt it very good. Because again, one positive thing about LGBT things, people, one thing we can do best is to party. And that's what we're doing much. Why am I telling this? I'm trying to ask you, try out to go the rainbow steps up. Because many companies are doing it. There are companies, how many of you using Apple? Lots. How many of you have stayed in Radisson? Watched Walt Disney? Flight Air Baltic. These are all companies that are supporting LGBT people. For some of these companies, even the leaders are openly gay, like Tim Cook for Apple. And we are using these, and these companies are saying, we are not gay friendly. We are open for the diversity. We are open for everyone. If you like us, we will like you as well. And that what that brings, that brings an enormous income, an enormous good reputation for the companies. It's not just the companies. I put the rain, a little bit of the rainbow map. It's also, and I like this, uh, my colleague's presentation about the branding of, uh, of a country. You can find Latvia somewhere there, down there, a little blue. We are a little blue at the moment, but I think we're gonna shine. But a lot of, not just companies, but a lot of cities and countries are branding themselves as LGBT friendly. Some cities are targeting their strategies on attracting talent. Because for you PR people and marketing people, you will know the double income, no children. This is most of the time who we are. And Stockholm is attracting directly. Gay people, come over. Work in Stockholm, because we are a good city. What that brings on? That brings talent over there, because most of the time we're highly educated, well paid. There are cities like London, Amsterdam, Barcelona, Sidges, that are directly targeting their cities to the gay clientele. Because when we look to the people that come to Latvia, LGBT people are not going to piss on a monument of freedom. We are going to opera. We are going to use the culture, the fantastic restaurants, the hotels. And we believe that Riga could as well be one of the destinations for the LGBT tourists. This is the place and this is the destination. And one of the leading LGBT media already called taking into account that Riga will host the Europride, already called that Riga might be the next gay destination in 2015 and 16. 
where people want to see, because there are so many things we, sh we are proud of, and I think we just have to shout it out loud. In a conclusion, I have to say one thing. If the politicians and some business leaders are not ready to be brave and pave the way to a future, to a better business, we'll do it ourselves. So, because changing the world is really hot, and the changing history is even much more hotter. So, I'm in, and it's your choice to follow us. Thank you. Hey, hello. Thank you for your hot presentation. And uh, what do we have in common in all these um, keynote speeches we heard is that uh, communication is all about bravery. And you have to be really brave to be a business leader or to be, or to be a representative of 12% uh, of... Uh, eight to 12, yes. Okay, we, eight to 12% 8 to of, of people. And uh, we have still some time is there any questions? Please raise your hands. Yes, please, a microphone there, please. Or you, uh, you can uh, shout. We will hear. This is the, exactly what I was to, uh, telling you. In, like, for example, in Latvia, there has never been uh, a naked people in the parade. At least I haven't seen, and I've been organizing that since 2006. Uh, but in other countries, uh, the pride started as a struggle as it is now. It became as a carnival. It became as something they're already celebrating. But you will always see these couple uh, half-naked people or naked people that just want to uh, that go to the Pride as a carnival, but you will never going to see uh, the people that are going there for uh, political struggles. I have no idea, actually. That's their identity. They really feel like, you know, you wake up in the morning and what I want. I want to go, get naked and go to a Pride. Well, what can I do? It's like everyone wel everyone's is welcome unless you're friendly towards yourself and towards anyone else. But I, actually, I have never been naked to the Pride, so I, I, actually, I have no idea. But, uh, but, but yeah, there are some people that, that really feel, and this is mostly a carnival thing. Look at the Rio de Janeiro. There is like only half naked people over there. But it's good about the, the left-handed. This is the one thing that we always say. It's like, you know, we're born gay. The same as the left-handed and the same as the other different, same if you're born with the blue eyes, etc. So things happen. And that's not bad. Uh, any more minorities in the... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Everyone is a minority, actually. Yes, everybody is a personality. And thank you, Kasper, for your... Uh, for your courage uh, to speak about uh, this hot topic. Thank you very much. Thank you.